A question that often comes to us from customers and from farmers is how long should I feed pre calver minerals for? And our recommendation is eight weeks. And people are generally surprised by this because they think they've normally got away by feeding it for five weeks or six weeks. What would your view be on that? Well, we do know, for example, selenium needs six weeks supplementation prior to calving. So uh, it, if it's a selenium, and selenium is probably the single most important element in the pre-calver mineral, simply because it's highly involved in um, mitigating um, the chances of retained afterbirths which in many ways is probably the single most challenging uh, postpartum disease because it definitely does affect uh, cow health in more ways than um, one. And it has, uh, it has the single greatest uh, indicator as to whether a cow will get a displaced abomasum after calving. Okay. So on the selenium alone, you're looking at six weeks. Minimum. Right. Just a query that popped up recently was a farmer, he was doing it as he should, he was feeding his uh, pre calver mineral for eight weeks, mm -hmm. this was last season, and so he started at the start of December, and by the end of January, the cows that he was talking about had eight weeks mineral supplementation got, but these cows weren't actually calving for another three or four weeks, mm -hmm. so he thought he was, he was correct in stopping, so because he had eight weeks, he was stopping, so they had no minerals for about three to four weeks before mm -hmm. calving. Would that lead to issues? Yeah, you can't stop. You can't stop. So once you start, so obviously the most practical and economical thing to do for farmers would be if they could batch their cows according to calving date and feed them all in accordance with that, feed them all for eight weeks. But as we know, at farm level, that's not always easy to do. So it's best to feed them for longer than shorter. Would that be right? Yes, uh, batching may actually be more expensive in other ways because you're trying to manage three different oh, herds yes. within a herd. So in actual fact, it's probably just easier to give the mineral. There's no downside to giving the mineral for more than eight weeks. <clears throat> and if the calving date, if the scanning or anton was incorrect, you'd, be, you'd run the risk of a cow not actually getting the mineral for as long as it should be? And that's a, probably a lower risk and it would only be an individual animal or some okay. individual animals. And so we would get questions from farmers, uh, should they analyze their silage and get it tested for a mineral profile? And our recommendation is they should. Um, and sometimes we, people will come back to us with the mineral profile and the feed value. And because the feed value might be very good in that silage, they, actually, they, they may be of the view that I can feed less of a pre calver mineral because the feed value is so good. So it's important to distinguish the feed value is energy intake, the mineral profile is totally separate. Isn't that right? Correct. And sometimes we can overinterpret analysis of silage. I suppose realistically, what you want from a good pre calving silage analysis is factors like DMD um, and the, the main headline issues. Sometimes mineral analysis, a lot of it comes down to what's actually available. So you may have a mineral content in the silage, but is it available? Okay, so um, maybe locked up. Yes, depending on other, other minerals like molybdenum in the, in the silage and so forth. Is it coincidence? So we have we have many cases where people will come to us and they might say that the cal when when they fed a better pre calver mineral, their calves were stronger and hardier a a immediately after calving. They got up a little bit easier, they got up faster, they sucked. Whether it be a beef beef case or whether it be a dairy case, is that just coincidence or is it is it down to science and is it is it correct that it, it's always something that's very hard. I suppose it comes back to take vaccination for example. With modern farming going down the herd health route and bigger numbers and the cost of individual treatments getting more expensive, uh, good diet, good mineral supplementation and vaccination are the way to go. And generally speaking, each one of those factors makes you a bit luckier. So if you add up the luck yes, factor... Yes, yes, yes. Um, they all lead and complement each other. Absolutely. And as dairy farming becomes closer and closer to like other production systems such as pigs and poultry, it's about putting systems in place that you, you do not depend on getting lucky, yeah. you make your own luck. So it's prevention rather than Absolutely. being reliant and on one, one individual thing. Yeah. And, and you mentioned vaccination there. And some, sometimes people may be of the view that if I'm vaccinating for a number of reasons, a number of different viruses or infections, I can actually get away with a lower mineral or a lower, uh, run the risk of running down the mineral status of the herd a little bit more. But 
the mineral the mineral status is quite important for the immune system to function, isn't that right? Absolutely, yeah. Uh, better immune systems, you will get better immune response to vaccinations if the mineral status and the energy status and the food status, the diet status is maximum. And we see that as well in humans, obviously. If mm. somebody took a vaccine, got a vaccine, but they were actually tired and run down and not looking after themselves right, they may not react as well as they should with that vaccine. Yeah. So it's obviously the same in animals. Yeah, and I think it's important to note as well as um, dairy cows are athletes. Yeah. You know, they're, they're athletes, they're high performance. So whereas we may not have to be watching our diet like elite human performers, Likewise, cows, dairy cows, are operating at a different level to maybe a suckler cow that would not have the same pressures on it post-calving. So you have to give your cows every chance they can. And in many cases, farmers may be doing the same as what they have done a number of years ago, but their cows have actually moved on another level. The cows may be producing, in some cases, over 500 kilos of milk solids, yes. whereas back 10 years ago, that cow may have been producing less than 400 kilos of milk solids. Mm. So it's important that if what goes into that animal is not the same as what was going in 10 years ago. Yeah, like everything is changing in dairy farming. Tractors are getting bigger, trailers are getting bigger, milk machines are getting bigger, cows are getting better. But as you say, we have to match and the biggest challenge in dairy farming is that the cow is still black and white. So we don't realise our cows have evolved yes, yes. so much. They still look the, the same, look so the we same. think they're the same. You know, with genomics, especially the rapid uh, advancements in genomics, our cows have, uh, have actually upped their performance without us realising it or appreciating maybe as much. And we mentioned earlier that how important the pre-caver mineral is in terms of generating the follicle that will be used um, after calving and getting the cow back in calf. But in other factors, it, if the cow calves a little bit easier, if she doesn't get any uterine infections, she recovers faster, so she is going to be more likely to conceive, assuming genetics allows her mm. and every other environmental factor allows her, that she will actually be more likely to go and calf to the first service than if she was to have a difficult calving. Would that be right? Yes. Um one of the big successes of farming the last 10 years in particular is the, not the elimination, but the reduction of dystocia. So the amount of calvings we're seeing as vets has dramatically reduced. Okay. So farmers are getting, farmers are focusing, unlike before, they're focusing on milk, not milk and beef. So they're getting the cow to produce an easier calving calf so that the cow then has less Less work to do and gets up to, yeah. and recovers and gets on with her job. And not just our, is the egg quality improved through mineralisation of the diet before calving, but as you say, the uterine environment is better because there's less retained afterwards, less uterine infections, quicker involution. And if, if there's less human intervention in the calving, be it from the farmer or the vet, the cow will recover faster. And just in terms of products, we might get queries from farmers about whether should I should use a bag mineral for my cows, a molass bucket, or maybe a bolus. Where would you see one or other fitting into a farm system, or would there be a reason, would it be down to customer preference, farmer preference? I think, obviously, in a house situation, the bag mineral is actually quite useful, because if they're being fed twice a day in a system like this, it's very easy to apply. Boluses might be more useful in a situation with suckler animals in particular or animals that are not housed like these and um, the bolus has that advantage. Some farmers prefer bolus anyway because they know it's definitely good yeah. in there <clears throat> and it is a once-off application. Mineral buckets are very flexible. You can use them outdoors, indoors or anywhere like that. If you are using buckets, bucket minerals, it may be useful to put the buckets in a kind of a stand so that wildlife can't get at the minerals. Okay. Because the molasses... Badgers and so on. Yeah, because molasses is, uh, are attracted to the, uh, to the molasses. So that might be a factor if you have a, in a high TB area. Okay. And in terms of boluses, very handy for uh, depending on the situation. Most cases, bolus has four macro trace elements. They mightn't have the vitamins. In most cases, they don't have, have any vitamins. So depending on the case, if you have a, a high-performing dairy cow that needs a lot of vitamins, to uh, need a lot of antioxidants, a bolus won't have that. So it may be used in compl to complement another, another strategy and may not be used on its own. Yeah, and I, I, we would see ourselves that bag mineral tends to be used more in dairy. Okay. And the bolus is more in beef. Okay.